All right, welcome back to the third and final example of ANOVA using Excel. This time we are going to do the third block in our data set uh, from our Spa Cha Cha social media marketing campaign. And you'll notice that it looks uh, materially different from the first two that we have used. And that is because we have done a much more complex and pervasive experiment. Let's look at the Austin data for starters. Notice that in the city of Austin, I have six times run my experiment for both the low price point, medium price point, and the high price point. I've done the same in Boise, Cupertino, and Denver. So for each city, I will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 1, 2, 3 equals 18 data points. 18 data points times four cities. For those of you scoring at home, sounds like about 72 data points, where in our other experiments, we have used only 12 data points. So you can see that we've had to have go out and collect fully six times more data. Now, what does that additional data gives us? Give us, well, two things. One, just like before, I can still compare low to medium to high price points. And again, just like before, I can compare locations. Austin versus Boise versus Cupertino versus Denver. However, I can now also analyze the variance within a city at a given price point because I have multiple observations. Notice that before, for the low price point in Austin, I had one and only one observation. There is no variance in one observation, therefore there is no variance to be analyzed. Clearly, in six observations there is some variance, which allows me then to analyze the interactive effect between each of the price levels and each of the locations. So to do this in Excel, we'll do the following. Go to my Data menu, choose Data Analysis, now choose ANOVA 2-factor with replication, two factors, one is price, one is location. Replication simply means that I have, so, I have in my experiment collected data multiple times for each row column combination. Click on OK. Input range, well look at that, it already knows where to look for my data. So that's great. It knows that I have six rows per sample. Don't want to mess that up or you will get unusable output. I'll keep my alpha at 0.05 and let's put our output on a new worksheet and press OK. Wow, that was quick. Here is my output. Let's do a little bit of formatting as we always do just to make this a little bit easier to read. Go there, home, click on Mr. Comma, highlight, comma, Highlight, comma, highlight, comma, highlight, comma. That never gets old, does it? And we can do the same to the interesting part of the uh, ANOVA table down here as well. And highlight, comma. Now, let's go back real quick and look at, uh, uh, at, at our summary table, which is the top half here. So first we have for the city of Austin, this is I had six low price point, six medium and six high price point observations. There you can see their sums, their averages, and their variances. Now if I want, I can type in here standard D, and I can simply calculate the standard deviation by taking the square root, as we would say in Idaho, square root of the variance <clears throat> and then I can format it so it's pretty and copy it over there like that and I could using control C and control V simply paste oops, that down to the remaining city summary data blocks and might as well do that with the label as well, so we can be thorough. Help us pass the desert island test. That is to say, if somebody found this on a desert island with no one there to explain it to them, they would have some hope of being able to decide what it was all about. 
All right, so let's just eyeball some of this. For Austin, Texas, the low price point, the average number of responders was 75 and had a standard deviation of 9. For Boise, the average number of responders out of 200, again, for the medium price point was 91 with a standard deviation of 16 and a half. For Cupertino, the high price point, the average number of responders was 65, and the standard deviation was 15. Uh, one more here, average number of responders in Denver for low price responders was 70, with a standard deviation of just over 20 and a half. If I wanted to look at low price point responders, I could simply do that by highlighting that cell for Denver, that one for Cupertino, that one for Boise, and that one for <clears throat> Austin. You can see that in the four different markets, my average number of responders for low price point were 75, 81, 59, and 70.33. All right, down here I have my ANOVA table, which will allow me to look at the sources of the different variation in the data. That is to say, did the variation in my data, was it attributable to the price point? Was it attributable to the location? Or was it attributable to the combination of price point and combination? Or was it attributable to some subset of those three factors? So first, let's see sample. This actually, and in Excel speak, that means my row which if I look back at my data tab, my row you can see is location. Just type that in, row for location in our particular example. Columns, that would be, that's right, price, low, medium, or high. And the interaction, we can use price times location. That's how we uh, statisticians will talk about interaction. And now we can do our test. Okay, here is the interest, the values of interest for deciding what the answers were to those hypothesis tests most quickly. First of all, for sample or location, you can see that testing the null hypothesis that the response means are the same city by city, I can reject that null hypothesis because my p-value is less than alpha. Let's go back and look at the data. That is to say, if all other things being equal, I took the average of those, compared it to the average of those, the average of those, and the average of those, statistically speaking, there is a difference. Can I see that up here in my, my, my data? Well, let's try it. I have a, 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 a mean response of 70.7 for Austin. Let's put a color on that so we can just keep track of it. Uh, yellow. And in Boise, 86.6. In Cupertino, 62. And in Denver, 69. Take those into account with their standard deviation, and it is telling us that, <clears throat> statistically speaking again, at least one of those differs from the overall mean, which was this value, <clears throat> the, the weighted average of these three values, or roughly 70. <clears throat> okay. And eyeballing that, you could probably guess that 69 and 70 are not different from the mean. 62 is a definite maybe. 86 is your definite suspect. You could also use a Tukey test to prove that out more scientifically. All right, next let's look at the variation in our data as normalized for the factor we've called price. My p-value is 0.83, which is very high. You see that my calculated f-statistic is near zero, where my critical f-statistic is 3.15. My calculated statistic does not come anywhere near falling into the rejection region. This tells us that so far the variance is explained in our data by location, not by price. The economists among us would say, hey, wait a minute, that means that the demand for this product, 
product is geographically different, not price different or price elastic, that means on average I will sell just as many at the high price as I will at the medium or low price. And if I'm just wanting to be a pure capitalist to maximize profit, I would therefore make my product launch at the high price. Now let's look and see if there's an interaction. P-value 0.28. What this says is that I fail to reject the null hypothesis that there is no interaction between price and location, meaning all locations respond similarly to changes in price. Also good to know. So here is the finished product right here with some notes and a little chart. This spreadsheet will be uploaded onto Blackboard for your use. Again, for location, P is less than alpha. I reject the null hypothesis. The evidence says that demand does vary by location. For price, P is greater than alpha. I fail to reject the null hypothesis, and I have no evidence to say that demand varies by price. Price, or excuse me, demand is inelastic with respect to price. Your marketing friends would love that news. And lastly, for the interaction between the two, meaning where I have price and location information taken into effect, again, P is greater than alpha. I fail to reject the null hypothesis, which in more plain English means that there is no evidence saying that demand is constant across price and location intersections. That means that, <clears throat> as we said before, the interaction is zero. We have no evidence to suggest that there is an interaction between the um, price and location factors. Okay, so look for this full Excel spreadsheet up on Blackboard and online students be sure and uh, discuss this liberally both on the discussion boards or your journals as needed and in class students uh, we will talk about this further in class and I look forward to seeing you there.